Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex and you are watching BC Adventure. Today we're going to be looking at getting some backup options for our Unraid server, meaning our app data folder and our flash drive. It's really important to back up these, these two uh, critical pieces of our Unraid servers because, you know, for someone like myself who's constantly playing around, you know, changing things, it's really easy to mess something up and we want to be able to go back to square one. So today I'm going to be doing a quick video on how to back up those two options or those two, uh, two important pieces of Unraid infrastructure. So in my last video uh, or tutorial, I showed you how to get the uh, app data backup installed. And today we're going to go over on how to use it as well as how to manually back up our flash drive using the Unraid GUI. We're also going to upgrade the Unraid server that we deployed a couple videos ago. Uh, just so everyone has uh, an idea on how to upgrade their server because Unraid has changed things around a little bit. And um, now you're you're essentially using uh, the um, Unraid login that ties your serial to your Unraid account to upgrade. Whereas before we just used to go into settings, uh, upgrade OS, click check, and it would just all do it from there. So we're going to go over how to do that as well. So uh, with all that said, uh, let's jump right into it. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is get logged into our Unraid server. And from here, we're going to start off with backing up our flash drive, which is the easiest to do from the Unraid dashboard. So when you get logged in, you're going to be presented with your main screen, which has your devices. From there, you're going to want to select your flash drive right here. So right there. We're not going to open the folder. We're going to click flash. And from there, we need to click flash backup. Now it's going to start creating the zip file and then it's going to start downloading it. Now, if you were ever in a situation where you, your Unraid flash drive died or um, something went wrong with settings you were changing around, all you would need to do is get the Unraid uh, flash tool from their website, and then you can actually import this backup file to reburn to another flash drive or your existing flash drive. And then you can go right back to where you started off before any issues started. So this is going to take a few minutes. Oh, there we go. It's done already. So we're just going to click allow. It's going to send it over and we've got the whole thing right here. Now, if you're on a Mac, it's going to uh, automatically uncompress it. So it's best to do this on a Windows system or you can just recompress it using uh, the built in Mac tools. Um, but uh, I've I've had the best success using the uh, Windows uh, a Windows system to do this. Uh, it's perfectly fine doing it on a Mac. There's just uh, you know that extra step of recompressing it. So once that's done, you can open up your Unraid tool and you can flash this back to your USB drive, and it'll put you right back to where you were before you had any issues. Now the next thing we need to do is set up our um our where are we here um go to our plugins we need to set up our app data backup so what i did originally was try to create a folder using the app data backup tool but that does not work so we're going to go over to shares we're going to add a share and we're just going to call it app data backup and we're going to add that share. Now, I don't want this exported. I want this to be left as is. I want as uh, little chances as possible of this getting messed up. So we're going to go back over to our plugins. And then from here, we're going to click the app data shield. And we need to set where this is going to go. So I'm going to go back to user and app data backup. And that's it. And then from here, we're just going to click save. And then we're going to click on manual backup and yep. 
So what it's doing right now is it's stopping the containers, it's taking a backup, and then it's starting the container back up. So right now it is actually done backing up Jellyfin and now it's backing up the flash drive. Now it's good practice to have more than one backup. So we've downloaded a copy of our flash drive and now app data backup is actually taking a backup of it as well and it's gonna store it on the array. So that is pretty simple when it comes to getting your uh, dockers backed up. Now, when I say dockers, I mean the container, the docker storage file, your settings, it's grabbing all of that. So if you were to nuke your docker file, you could just create a, uh, what you would do is you would delete the, the docker file that was corrupted and then you would disable Docker and then re-enable it again and then run this tool. What that's going to do is it's going to put your Docker containers back the way they were before any changes that possibly nuked it, um, you know, caused them to stop working. So this is, this is really easy to get set up. It's really easy to run. Now, um, one thing I do want to point out is that if you have Docker system like myself, so if we go over to my Docker here, this is a, like, as you can see, it's taken a minute. This would take at least two hours to back up, minimum two hours. Um, my Docker file is, uh, let's see how big it is. So my Docker is, uh, it's about 60 gigs, I believe. So, you know, that, that in itself is going to take a while. And, uh, and then, of course, the amount of Docker containers that I have and the size of them is fairly large. Like my Plex Media Server, all the metadata, like this works out to be about 20 gigs. You know, my Sonar and Radar databases, they're fairly large. Uh, Home Assistant is a large container. My Libra Photos, that is uh, astronomically huge with all the metadata in it. And uh, it's, it's so, you know... It, have a little bit of patience. Uh, if you do want to make things speed up a little bit, you can choose to not use compression. So in that case, you would come down here to use compression and you would change that to no. Um, you can speed it up a little bit if you use multi-core, but uh, I just keep it normal. I typically run this in the middle of the night when nobody's using the server and uh, that tends to keep the family happy. So uh, yeah, the next thing we're going to look at too is uh, upgrading our Unraid server. So as you can see, I have an update available, but I'm not upgrading this particular server. So we're going to go back to the test server. And we're going to check this guy and make sure it's up to date. So if we go over here and click check for update, we can see that 7.1.3 is available. So how are we going to uh, get this upgraded? Well, we're just gonna click view change log and start update. It's gonna let us know that there's some issues with losing internet connectivity after updating to this release and that they are working on a fix. If you're affected, roll back to 7.1.2. So can should we get this installed? Well. It is best practice to upgrade to the latest version for security issues. So we're going to give this a shot. We're going to update and see what happens. I don't think it'll be an issue, but let's give it a shot. We can always roll back to the previous version that we're on. And if the if we are in a, in a scenario where we do need to do that, I will show you the steps on how to get that done. So we're going to let this go ahead and finish up, and then we'll jump right back into it as soon as the system is good to go. Just want to quickly point out that while we are doing the upgrade, it is also backing up the existing Unraid USB drive as well. So uh, we have three points of backup now, which is um, great standards for backing up your important files. I make money when I talk, when I talk, I'm a boss, take a lot. All right, so now that the 
Unraid update is done, we're going to click done. And then if we go over to the top left hand corner, we're going to see reboot required for update. So we're going to click that and then it's going to present us the options. We're going to go ahead and click reboot and update. And then it's going to take about a minute or two for this to complete. Now, I just want to point out that this is the first time that I've ever seen this reboot screen. I have not seen it in previous versions, but the way that we updated here was a little bit different than how I normally do it. So uh, that being said, the system's going to reboot and we're going to jump right back into it as soon as this is done. Okay, so we are back up and running. Sorry about uh, uh, the... Um no audio after the update finished and uh, before we rebooted there i'll go in and fix that but uh, yeah we're going to get logged back in here okay so we can see we're logged back in now let's check for internet connectivity we'll head on over to apps and if this updates we know we're good to go there we go all right so that is how easy it is to upgrade unraid so with all that said and done, uh, that pretty much sums up this video. Uh, just some nice and quick uh, backup and up upgrading, uh, you know, fun. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, Unraid is such a simple and easy server to operate and maintain. It's one of the main reasons why I love it so much. There's so, so many things that we can do with it to extend its capability. Um, it's just, it's, it's why I've been using them for eight years and, and have never looked back. With that being said, though, I would like to look into other uh, options such as TrueNAS and Proxmox. So, I'm going to be looking at doing some videos on on those guys in the next few weeks here. Um, Proxmox really has caught my attention uh, in the last few months, so I'm thinking that's where I'm going to start. It seems like it's a little bit easier of a uh, server operating system to get up and running. Um, I've tried dabbling with TrueNAS in the past, but for the life of me, I have not been able to figure it out, and it's it's strictly a me problem. I'm not reading the documentation. I'm just kind of installing it and, you know, giving it a go. And um, as we've experienced here on the channel before, that's not the best way to tackle new projects. So um, I'm going to spend a week or two looking into TrueNAS before I even think about touching it for a video. Uh, Proxmox, there's, uh, I just find the documentation a lot easier to understand, so um, once I have a look through that in the next few days here, I will put together a video on how to get Proxmox up and running. Um, and then, of course, uh, TrueNAS to follow. So, with all that said and done, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if there's anything else you would like to see covered in Unraid. Um, I'm still trying to work on the Minecraft server extensions. Um, that's because I don't play Minecraft. Uh, it's It's a little difficult for me to to figure all that stuff out, but um, nonetheless, I'm going to work on it because it is one of the most requested things I have gotten, is how do we add some extensions to Crafty or the original Minecraft server that I originally installed uh, a few months ago. So um, I'm gonna end the video here, like I said a few minutes ago. Take it easy, everyone. I hope you all had a great Father's Day and uh, yeah, enjoy this beautiful weather we've been getting, and I will catch you in the next one. Take it easy, everyone.